Good morning all, and it's a slightly earlier time this morning, uh, only because I have uh, some things I have to get uh, done today, and so I thought I'd come a bit earlier. And my little piece of bushland, you know, tea tree swamp, and you know, just yeah, nice little nature spot that just happens to be um, at the back of a um, little dam and is at the back of a fastly encroaching um, housing estate and it's not even a natural um, culvert it's it's man-made they've shaped and moved the creek and so I just thought I'd come here for a little, little walk this morning um, just to stroll down into some some bush and just find something that's a bit uh, normal and walking's a funny thing isn't it it's something that we often take for granted when we're younger and um, as we get older it becomes just that little bit more difficult uh, to do and this morning's little story um, is about walking uh, in back in uh, 1911 I think it was there used to be a um, yeah, 1911 to 1975 there was a train that uh, ran uh, from Bar Calden to Amarack and it just it carted between the two towns um, it would load <coughs> pardon me it would load um, up and, and move out of the station at about 5am uh, in the morning and it wouldn't arrive in Amarack or the other way, other way around until quite often 10 o'clock that night now for those that know the distance between Bar Calden and Amarack is only 42 kilometres. Now, if all ran well, it would take the train 10 hours to get from there, from Balcolden to Amarack, would take 10 hours for the journey, for 42 kilometres. So that's roughly four uh, miles, sorry, miles. And that was roughly four miles per hour that the train um, would travel at. When you consider that the average person <laughs> walks between three to four miles per hour, remember miles per hour, then that's quite slow. <laughs> and the story goes that as the train was uh, heading down the line, the, the driver saw a swaggy packing up his camp and about to move on. And so the driver of the train pulled up and said, do you want a lift, mate? And he goes, no, nah, no, nah, thanks. I'm in a hurry. <laughs> Thus indicating how slowly he believed that the train moved. But walking is something that is, is required of us spiritually in our Christian walk. We, we often call it the Christian walk. No one, notice no one's ever called it the, the Christian sprint or the Christian charge or the Christian gallop. It's a Christian walk. And I think that's deliberate because it goes at a, a set pace. You know, when you walk, you can generally just keep on walking. <coughs> Pardon me. If you're running, you can only do that for a limited amount of time. Sprinting, even less so. But walking at a consistent, steady pace of about three to four mile an hour, you can cover a great distance. And in fact, most of the world's population do just that, uh, walk great distances. And you know, the Kokoda, Kokoda track is not a sprint. I mean, some have tried to run it or have run it, but what's the point? It's the journey, isn't it? And so when you, when you walk that track, you walk at a steady pace and guess what, you get there. Paul said in Ephesians chapter four, therefore I, a prisoner serving the Lord, beg you, walk in a way that is worthy of your calling you have, because you have been called by God. It's commendable, walk in a way that is worthy, that is commendable to God. And what is that way that he talks about? Well, always be humble. Be gentle. Be patient with others, making allowance for each other's faulties and faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one Spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and one Father who is over all and in all and living through all. 
Each of you has been given a special gift through the generosity of Christ. You know, it's put together beautifully by, by Paul. You know, walk in a way that is befitting. And then he describes what that way looks like. Be humble. Be gentle. Be kind to each other. Um, because we all have faults. Paul's not saying only a few of you have faults or a few of us have problems. He's saying you all have faults. Be kind. Be gentle to one another. Walk humbly. You know, all too often in life we, we, we notice other people's faults very quickly. I mean, look at reality, reality TV shows. Um, well, don't. But, you know, everyone's quick to point out the faults. You look at the cooking shows. Um, and the competitions that they have. Everyone pointing out the faults with somebody else's cooking or their appearance or their style or their technique. It's a cooking show. Yeah. Cook what you like. How you like. But the whole premise of those programs is to pick out the faults. You know, like the swaggy pick, notice the fault of the train. You know, it was too slow, even for a swaggy. And often we look at our fellow uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, and even those who aren't our brothers and sisters in Christ in the world, and we, we pick fault. We find fault and we go, no, it's not worth, and they're not worthy of my time or, or my attention or my efforts, or, or I'll, I'll just be downright rude to them because it suits my need to be so. And that's not what Paul's saying here. He's saying, no, you, you're all one. You have one spirit, you have one son, and you have one father. Walk in such a way and be kind about it. There's nothing worse than unlikable Christians. And we don't need to add to that number today, do we? So, just as you get up this morning, just look up and wonder at what God has done for you. And then ask Him, how, do, how does He want you to walk today? Because it's, it's the walking and it's the process of walking and the journey along the way that decides eventually our destination. Let's pray together. Father, we want to thank you for this day. Thank you for the crispness and the freshness of it. Lord, thank you that um, we are still on our, our life's spiritual walk. We just pray that as we, we go through this day, Lord, help us to walk kinder and more humbly before our Lord. And that in do so, doing so, Lord, we show the glory of God to others around us. We just pray, Lord, for humility to, to recognise where we're wrong and where we've been unkind. We pray, Lord, that you, you help us today to become better at our walk. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. My friends, I know it's been an early start. Um, at least that wind's gone. But it's just, um, sun's just starting to come through now and to warm up the land. So uh, until I see you tomorrow, take care. God bless. I'll see some of you tonight for prayer meeting. Um, but yeah, look after yourselves and I'll see you soon.